Coming up, we're going to hear from State Representative Mike Ryle, who's running for re-election. He represents Carolina Forest. We'll also hear from a candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Carolina This Week starts right now. This is Carolina This Week. Carolina This Week with Tim McGinnis. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Tuesday, June 10th is a day a lot of candidates are looking forward to and voters as well. This morning, we're going to continue our talks with a lot of those candidates. One of them is Mike Ryle. He's running for District 56 state representative. That is just about all of Carolina Forest. It was the new seat that was created after the 2010 census, showing that Carolina Forest has definitely grown enough to have its very own state representative. Thanks for being with us this morning. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. And talking about that growth, it's one of the fastest growing areas, not only in the county, not only in the state, but in the whole country. Let's start off talking about infrastructure, because I think that's probably what everybody who lives in Carolina Forest wants to talk about. When are the roads going to be up to snuff? When, are, when is Carolina Forest going to get all the things that all the other areas of the county already have? Well, I think the issue with the roads is always going to be a, a challenge for us. Um, did a lot of homework on it, obviously, trying to figure out what we can do and what we can't do. As, as most of us are aware, that's a county road. To, to widen Carolina Forest Boulevard to a four lane is over $10 million. That's the amount of money that the county gives their group to do reconstruction and widening every year. So we'd be taking their entire budget for a year and saying that's all we're going to get done. So I, I don't believe that's going to happen. I've talked to county council and everybody else and it's just not, not practical. I do believe it's going to have to be another part of a ride program. And as you well know, because of the, the different obstacles that got in the way, we didn't get uh, everything done, so there's not going to be a, a ballot issue this year. And so it's probably going to be 2016 before you see that on the ballot. So I, I wish it were different than that. I wish it were better than that. But you've got state money, you've got CTC money, you've got matching money, but that has to come from the county. It's just not there right now, and, and, and it doesn't look like it's going to be there for a while. In the meantime, there's a lot of talk about getting International Drive finally going. Apparently that's going to start happening. It's just a matter of letting the time pass and crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. Postal Way is another, is another alternative. What are you looking at from what you can do in Columbia to make things happen that would at least just take some of the pressure off of Carolina Forest Boulevard and Highway 501 cutting through Carolina Forest? Well, right now the schedule is we've got the widening of 501 going on. Um, we did secure the funding for the other lane of that. So that's a few years out yet, but at least the funding's there. You can put things on a calendar, but if you don't decide how to fund it, it's not going to get done. So there is money now available to widen both sides of 501. The county has also uh, put the money aside for the turn lanes on Carolina Forest Boulevard. So you'll see three of those starting here in the next month or two, which that's a, a huge uh, safety concern. So I'm glad to see those are going. International Drive, um, it looks like December of this year, early January uh, next year. And I say that, but every time I, I, I get those dates all locked in, um, we see delays. What I will tell you is I've asked the county to update me monthly. We watch all those. Um, you know, little things make a big difference. For example, with the International Drive, we had an issue of uh, the environmentalists talking again about the woodpeckers. So we had to go out and do another study. Those two studies alone cost $40,000. That's money that doesn't go into in pavement. So there are going to be delays. There are going to be things that come up. But I, I feel much more confident now that I'm involved with it. They're updating me monthly. Uh, I have not heard anything that should get in the way of getting that started late this year. What that'll do is take a lot of pressure off 501. Very important. Um, long term, we've talked about what do we do once we get from 31 up to international to 90. You know, we, 90 itself over to 22. Uh, we, we need to look at that and say, how can we alleviate some of the pressure on 501? So I think there are things in the works, but they do take time. As far as the state, you know, I, I think everybody recognized the fact that we came up with some plans last year to put a billion dollars into the state again into the roads. Uh, it's moving money from uh, vehicle fees and other things. Again, it's a long-term process. Uh, nobody wants to see taxes raised right now. Everybody's heard what the governor said about the gas tax. So as far as uh, a lot of money coming our way to get a lot of things done, it's not there. Uh, 
but I do think, and I am excited about the fact that the state is growing. If we look at our current unemployment rate, 5.7, uh, first time I believe since 2001 was below the national average. Uh, Carolina Forest, uh, our district, out of the 950 jobs or so that came in through EDC last year, we got almost 700 of those. That's phenomenal. And again, International Drive is part of that. They know that there's going to be access from the 90 area. As we keep growing the state, you know, it started back with BMW. We see revenues coming up, things are turning around. That's how we're going to get out of this. And we just got to keep helping businesses relocate here and grow. We talk about jobs, and that was going to be my next question, is what do you do to, to, to keep bringing jobs? Because Carolina Forest is getting StarTech with 600 employees. Sure. At the same time, <clears throat> you say StarTech, 600 employees coming to that area of Carolina Forest, which is International Drive, River Oaks Drive uh, intersection. Again, you got to go back to infrastructure too. Are we going to be able to handle operations of this size? Yeah, I, I think we're fine in that area. There were a lot of concerns over it. Um, you, you know, we have a, a dense population there that we need to be able to find jobs for them. And I think we're doing that. Uh, we've seen the new, new gas stations going there. You've got a new food store there. You've got StarTech. Uh, that area has still got a lot more room for development. And, and I know the individuals that own it are planning on expanding it more. So. But if you look at where it is located, it is right there at 31. International drive out to 90 is going to create a, a nice way to get people in and out of there. So that area I think is going to be fine, but we do got to get international drive done. What are some, what, what's something else that you want to get done that maybe you didn't necessarily get done in your first term? What, what's, what's on your priority list if you're reelected? I, I think um, all of us remember what happened with the election process two years ago very excited to be part of and uh, strongly push the election law reform. And I think we all saw the benefits of this, that this year. Uh, everything was electronic. There was a lot less room for handoff errors, et cetera. So election law was one of the things that I was very happy with. We got it done. I think it makes everybody's lives a little simpler. I, th I think the next thing that's out there that as I watch this whole process, you know, I keep coming back to education, jobs, and infrastructure. We ran on that platform. I think we've delivered in all three areas. And so I'm going to tell you that that still remains the areas we got to focus on. I think we're doing a lot with education. Um, we all see that, you know, the, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, extra individuals in the school to help with the reading, the technology coming into the schools. Uh, we've increased the funding to the schools both years, last year and this year in the budget. So we, we want to keep that moving in the right direction. There's a lot of stuff out there on education right now. Infrastructure. We, we just got to keep looking for ways to do it. We got to keep pushing our budgets up so we have the money to do that. Uh, jobs, anytime there's an opportunity for jobs, we have to go after them. That's, that's where I'm at with it. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to travel with EDC last year to Sandusky uh, to help Ithaca come down here. It didn't matter that it's not in our district, it's in our county. That creates revenues. We need those things. The, the piece that's still out there that I want to spend a lot of time on is really ethics reform. Um, after being in the process, the election, studying the laws, seeing the things that have gone on, I think we have a lot of work to do there. If we look at, the, at our state level right now, we can see that there's still a lot of issues out there, a lot of stuff going on. How did this happen? Why did nobody see it? And I, and I think you'll see a lot of attention coming to that area, and I want to be part of that. Last question for you. Not a whole lot of time to answer it, but uh, why should I vote for you? Well, I'll say it very simply, this is, this is not a part-time job, it's a full-time job. Um, you know, I gave up what I was doing here as a living so I could commit my time to this. Uh, I've, I've lived my life, I've raised my family, I've been in business, I worked for others in business, and I think every piece of that was invaluable in, in being in Columbia and getting things done. And I think when you look at the two of us, uh, there's a huge difference there, what one brings to the table, experience, versus somebody else's who's starting out. And I, I think the results speak for themselves, and I think people want to see more of that. All right. Mike Ryle, state representative representing District 56, running for re-election. Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We'll be right back.